Hello and welcome. In this video, I want to go over some examples where we need to find the key features of a quadratic equation in standard form. And then towards the end, I want to show you how to graph one. Here are some notes on the special features. I encourage you to review them. And then when you are done, move forward with me with example number one. Example number one, find the axis of symmetry and the vertex. To find the axis of symmetry, we need to calculate negative b all over 2a. So here I'll begin by identifying my key values. The a term is 4, the b is negative 7, and the c is negative 1. So to get the axis of symmetry, I need to calculate negative b over 2a. So here we have negative and b is negative 7. We're going to divide that by 2 multiplied by a. The a value is positive 4. So we get uh, negative and negative make positive. That's going to be 7. And 2 multiplied by 4 is going to be 8. So here I'm actually going to get the decimal approximation since we have to calculate the vertex. So here we get that x is equal to 0.875. Now that we have the axis of symmetry, to get the vertex, all we got to do is substitute the axis of symmetry into the function and solve for y. So here's what I mean. Everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it by 0.875. So I'll have y equal to 4 multiplied by 0.875 quantity squared minus 7 multiplied by 0.875. And then we subtract 1. Because we have decimals, I think it might be useful to use a calculator. If you input this on decimals, it'll do it all in one um, hit. But if you're using a TI-30 or if you're using your phone, you might want to do this step by step. So here I'll show you the steps. But here, um, this part would evaluate to 3.0625. And then we would have um, minus 6.125 and minus 1. And then after that, uh, once you do this uh, evaluation, you should get that y is equal to negative 4.0625. And to be consistent with the three decimal uh, approximation, or rounding to three decimal places, I'll do the same thing here. So the 5 causes my 2 to jump to a 3. So I get that y is equal to negative 4.063 approximately. So the vertex is about uh, 0.875, the axis of symmetry, together with the negative 4.063. Let's move on to example two. Find the key features of the function and give exact answers and round to the nearest tenth if necessary. So here we're going to find six features. Let's begin with the concavity. And the concavity is determined by the a value. If a is positive, then we have concave up. If a is negative, then we have concave down. Here the a value is 4. So actually, let me go ahead and identify all of these. So the a value is 4. It's positive 4. We have concave up. Okay, now for the y-intercept. Uh, we have to substitute 0 for x, and then we'll have the uh, outcome 0c, zero 0c. Zero so here, um, we're going to have 0, and then the c term is negative 7. So this is the y-intercept, 0, negative 7, or if you're just identifying the y-value, negative 7. Next, to get the x-intercepts, I have to substitute 0 for y, and then I have to solve either using the quadratic formula, completing the square, or by factoring. So here we have 0 equal to 4x squared plus 4x minus 7. And my choice uh, is going to be to use the quadratic formula. So since I've already identified the a value, the b value, and the c value, I'm going to plug them in. So I get that x is equal to negative b, which is uh, 4 here plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 multiplied by the a value and the c value, so 4 and negative 7. 
that's going to be divided or everything is going to get divided by 2 multiplied by a so 2 times 4. I'll begin to evaluate so I get x equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root and then 4 squared that's going to be 16 and then here we have negative 4 times 4 which is uh, negative 16 but then a negative 16 times a negative 7 is going to change this to plus and then we have 112. That's going to get divided by 2 times 4 which is 8. So here we get that x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus square root of 128. And then I'm going to want to simplify the radical here. So I'm going to get the prime factorization of 128. So here I can break this down to 64 times 2. And then the 64 is the same thing as 8 times 8. And then here we get 4 times 2. And here we get 2, 2, and 2, 2. So I have all of the prime factors now. So I can rewrite this um, evaluation as x equal to negative 4 plus or minus. And again, since we're taking the square root, I want to get pairs. I cancel out one pair there, so I have one, two outside of the radical. I get rid of this pair, so I get another two. And I have this pair as well. So I can so I have another two outside of the radical. The only thing that gets to stay inside is this two that wasn't able to get paired with anything. So now I'll get I'll write this right here. I have x equal to negative four plus or minus uh, two times two times two is gonna give me eight. And then we have root two all over eight. The four and the eight, they have a greatest common factor of four, so I'll factor that out, leaving me with a four, negative one plus or minus two radical two all over eight. And then the four over eight is the same thing as one half, so I can reduce that. And my solution is going to be x equal to negative 1 plus or minus 2 root 2 all over 2. And those would be the exact solutions of my x-intercepts. I'm also interested in getting the approximations. And for that, I'm going to write uh, my x-intercepts individually. And to get the approximations, I'll use a calculator. And I've already done this. The Results are negative 1.91 and 0 0.91. Okay, moving on to the axis of symmetry, we have to calculate uh, negative b over 2a. So for our specific example, we get negative um, 4, since 4 is the b term. And we're going to divide that by 2 multiplied by a. Our a value in this case also is 4. So here we get negative 4 and then 2 times 4 is 8 and 4 over 8 can reduce to 1 half. So we have negative 1 half as our axis of symmetry. To get the vertex, we're now going to plug in the axis of symmetry into the equation. Everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it by a negative 1 half. Now because the negative 1 half is actually a nice uh, fraction, so to speak, I'm going to keep it in fraction form. So here I get that y is equal to 4 multiplied by negative 1 half squared plus 4 times negative 1 half. And we're going to subtract 7. Now uh, negative 1 half squared, that's the same thing as 1 over 4. And then here, um, 4 multiplied by negative 1 half, we're going to get negative uh, 2, and then we have minus 7. Here the 4 times 1 fourth is just going to give me a 1. So we have um, to evaluate 1 minus 2 minus 7, 1 minus 2 is negative 1, 
and then if we subtract 7 we're going to get negative 8. So our vertex is going to be the axis of symmetry which is negative 1 half and uh, what we just uh, evaluate for y so negative 8. Let's do another similar example. So here uh, we have to identify the key features of the function and then we're going to graph. Um, so identifying the key values, the a value is 2, the b value is negative 8, and the c value is 5. So beginning with the concavity, the concavity is determined by the um, a value. Since we have a positive 2, since the a value is positive, we have concave up. The y-intercept, if we have a quadratic in standard form, we can get the y-intercept by getting the coordinate 0, c, and the c value here is positive 5. So the y-intercept is 0, 5. Now to get the x-intercepts, I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So I have the outline right here, x equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I am going to plug in my values. So here I have negative, uh, negative 8 because my b is negative 8 uh, plus or minus the square root of negative 8 squared minus 4 multiplied by the a value which is 2 and the c value which is 5. And we're going to divide all of this by 2 times a. So a again, that's going to be 2 here. So simplifying a little bit, uh, the negative negative make a positive. So I get positive 8 plus or minus the root of negative 8 squared, which is 64. And then we're going to subtract 4 times 2 times 5. So 4 times 2 is 8. If we multiply 5, that'll give me a 40. And 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, so now I'm left with 8 plus or minus and 64 minus 40. That's going to leave me with a 24. And we're going to divide this by 4. The 24, I'm going to get its prime factorization so that I can reduce or simplify the radical. So here we get 12 times 2. And then the 12, I can uh, rewrite it as 4 times 3. And then here I have 2 times 2. Now that I have the prime factorization, I can write this as x equal to 8 plus or minus. Here I have a pair of 2's, so I get 2 radical uh, 3 times 2, 6, all over 4. Next, I notice that the 8 and the 2 have a greatest common factor of 2, so I'll factor that out. So I get x equal to 2, 4 plus or minus uh, root 6, all over 4. The 2 and the 4 reduce to 1 half. So my exact solution, x equal to 4 plus or minus square root of 6, all over 2. Okay, next, I am going to calculate the axis of symmetry, and we can do that by calculating negative b over 2a. So my b value is negative 8, so here we have negative, uh, negative 8 divided by 2 times a, which is 2. So we get 8 divided by 4, which gives us a 2. So the axis of symmetry is going to be 2. And then for the vertex, we just got to plug in 2 into the equation. Everywhere we see an x, we're going to replace it by a 2. So we get y equal to 2 multiplied by 2 squared minus 8 multiplied by 2. And then we're going to add a 5. So this is going to equal to 2 multiplied by uh, 2 squared is 4. We're going to subtract 8 times 2, which is 16. And then we're going to add a 5. So y equals 8 minus 16 plus 5. 8 minus 16 is negative 8. And then if we add 5, we're going to get a negative 3. And I get that the vertex will be the axis of symmetry, which is positive 2, along with what we just solved for y, uh, negative 3. 
we are now ready to graph this since we have all of the key features. And notice that because we are going to graph, we're going to need the exact values for the um, x-intercepts. And I believe that I only gave you the uh, exact answers. So let's go ahead and calculate those very quickly. I recorded each x-intercept uh, separately. And the first one is going to evaluate to 3.22. And the other one is going to be approximately 0.78. So now that we have the exact values, uh, we can begin to graph. So I'm going to make use of the y-intercept first. So 0, 5. So 0, 5, we got to begin at the origin, and then we're going to go up 5 units. So that's going to land us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right here. That is the y-intercept. And actually, I'm going to change to black here. Okay, so now let's go back here and let's graph the x-intercepts. So 0.78 and 3.22. We're going to have to use our best judgment to graph those ones. But here, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more here. And I changed to red. But uh, again, the x-intercepts, I'm going to begin with 0.78. So 0.78 is going to be a little bit more than a half here. So I'm going to put it somewhere right there. And then the second x-intercept is 3.22. So we're going to go to 3. So 1, 2, 3. And 0.22 has to be a little bit less than half. So somewhere around there. Okay, next I'm going to want to uh, graph the vertex. So the vertex is 2, negative 3. So I'm going to go to 2. So 1, 2, and then go down 1, 2, 3. I'm going to plot that point. And here I'll draw the axis of symmetry so that I can reflect the y-intercept. So here we can see that the y-intercept is two distances away from the axis of symmetry. So to reflect it to the other side, it also has to be two distances away from the axis of symmetry. So here we have the reflection point, And now we have a nice sketch for the parabola.